we are a group of the nature enthusiasts who wish to share our knowledge and experience with the world. We strive to bring informative and educational from the tiny living world to the city dwellers. Our motto, empowering environmentalists and people related to this field through the, our various program. This webinar is a one such and there are number of events in the line. Stay tuned and to know more. Now moving forward then towards our webinar, which is related to hipposa, big hitters or not. Oh, Amruta, can you hear me? Yeah, ma'am. I'm starting. Oh, but the thing is, you're on mute, actually. Whatever you said, nobody could listen. Sorry, ma'am. I can start again. Sorry, ma'am. Hello. Good evening. Everyone, hope, ma'am, now I'm audible. Yes, you are. Please go ahead. Everyone hope all, all you are doing good. I'm Amruta from the Nature I team, your host for the evening. So before beginning, let me brief about the Nature Eye to you guys. So the, so the Nature Eye, which is powered by Wildlife Arc. We are a group of nature enthusiasts who wish to share our knowledge and experience with the world. We strive to bring informative and educational content from the tiny living world to the city rulers. Our motto, empowering environmentalists and people related to this field. Through, the, through our various programs, this webinar is a one and such. And there are a number of events in the line. Stay tuned to know more. Now moving forward towards our webinar, which is related to Hipposa, big hitters or not. 15th Feb is a World Hippo Day, an occasion for us to celebrate these incredible creatures. Before 60 million years ago, the evolution of the hippos to become hippopotami. In the 1910, the attempt to import the hippos, the US Senate nearly passes a bill to import hippos to control water finances and help to solve the American meat crisis. In the 1980s century, Pablo Escalar imported four hippos from the New Orleans, Colombia in the year 2006. The International Union for the Conservation of Nature lists the hippos as a vulnerable species on the, its red list. How to celebrate this day? Celebrate National Hippo Day by raising awareness to protect and support hippos. These mammals are primarily killed for the meat. You can spend time on reading books and articles about hippos to know their beauty beyond their fears. Best way to celebrate this day is to get out and show some love to hippos. Post pictures and share your thoughts about the National Hippo Day on the social media by using the hashtag Hippo Day. World Hippo Day, baby eyes and flinking ears, skimming the surface of the water, accompanied by the occasional signature, whiz hong, and you are undoubtedly among the world's third largest mammal. The hippopotamus derives its name from the Greek word hippos, which is a mean horse, and potamus stands for river. Now we start with the webinar. First speaker for the today's webinar, Mr. Abude Ajila. He is a wildlife enthusiast and budding zoologist. He also writes blogs on various animals and their evolutions. Second presenter for the today's webinar is a Nishta Bharti. She is a, an assistant professor of zoology at a CDLU. Sirsa Haryana. 
she did her master in animal behavior and wildlife conservation before starting the session i would request to everyone to put up their mics and if you want to ask any question or queries you can put message in chat box now i would request to our first speaker abudhya to share his thoughts Abhidyo, you are not audible. Hello. Audible. Oh uh, yes, but the sound is very low. You need to be a bit louder. Hello. I'm yeah. audible now. Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, so, good evening to all and everyone over here, the fellow na nature enthusiasts, professors, and others, to this event of ours, which is titled "Hippos, Big Eaters or Not." So, today, me for the evening, me myself, Mr. Abhijitajila, and my fellow speaker, Ms. Nishta Bharti, will be talking about uh, some facts about hippos, and we'll be busting some myths over here. So, shall we start, Nishta? Okay, so I'll be taking you through the description and many other various points throughout the presentation. So let's just start with the first and most important thing. As mentioned by Amrita before in her brief discussion, hippopotamuses are also called river horses and are the third largest extant mammals in the world after elephants and rhinoceros. They are found throughout sub-Saharan African countries like Kenya, uh northern regions of the democratic republic of congo and tanzania they are heavy heavy weight animals weigh, weighing up to about 1500 kgs for bulls and 1300 kgs for cows measuring 2.90 to 5.05 meters or 9.5 to 16.6 feet long with their tails around 1.15 to 1.84 feet in length and 1.30 to 1.65 meters tall to their shoulders now hippos are big animals which basically says that they are easily recognizable they're recognizable they are recognizable by their barrel shaped torsos they have huge mouths which reveal their large canine tusks their nearly hairless bodies with columnar legs and large size and despite their stocky legs you might be wondering they're quite huge animals but despite all of the appearances they can be deceiving because they are capable of running 30 kilometers per hour or 19 miles per hour over short distances and as with various animals we can see huge amounts of sexual dimorphism which is also visible with hippos uh miss nishta can you just uh, go to the first slide as as i was mentioning males go grow throughout their lives while females reach a maximum weight at around their age 25 can we go to the next slide now miss nishta thank you now as mentioned and as we see through our infographic channels adult hippos are hippos are mostly in the water so they move at about 8 kilometers per hour in water typically resurfacing to breathe every 3 to 5 minutes the young ones however have to breathe every 2 to 3 minutes their process of surfacing surfacing and breathing however is a little unconscious a hippo sleeping under water will rise and breathe without waking up they close their nostrils when they go beneath the surface and just like in crocodiles the eyes ears and nostrils of hippos are placed high on the roof of their skulls which allows these organs to remain above the surface while the rest of the body submerges under water like i mentioned before hippos 
are more aquatic animals, semi-aquatic animals, but they love to laze off in water. They spend up to 16 hours a day in it in a way to stay cool and only travel inland during dusk or night time to graze on sharp grasses, which is basically their main food source. They spend four to five hours grazing and consume at about 68 kgs of grass each night in one, so one setting. Can we get the next slide, please? Okay, now that's the description. Now we'll talk about the evolution of hippopotamuses. Now, as mentioned, until 19, 1909, naturalists and evolutionists grouped hippos with pigs based on their molar patterns. And several lines of evidences, along with first from blood proteins and from molecular systematics and DNA and fossils showed that their closest relatives are not pigs, but cetaceans, whales, dolphins, and porpoises. The common ancestors of hippos and whales branched from off the class Romantharian, and the rest even toed ungulates. The cetaceans and hippo lineages split soon afterwards. The most recent theory of the origins of Hippopotamidae suggests that hippos and whales shared a common semi-aquatic ancestor that branched off from other Articodactyls around 60 million years ago. This hypothesized ancestral group likely split into two branches around 54 million years ago. One branch would evolve into cetaceans, probably, probably beginning, beginning about 52 million years ago with the proto whale Pachycetus and other early whale ancestors collectively known as Archaeocetae, which eventually underwent aquatic adaptations into completely aquatic cetaceans. The other branch became the anth Anthracotheres, which is a large family of four-legged beasts, the earliest of which, which were found in the late Eocene, would have resembled skinny hippos with comparatively small and narrow heads. Now, all branches of anth Anthracotheres, except that which evolved into Hippopotamidae, became extinct during the Pliocene without leaving any descendants. The discovery of a pyrigenes in East Africa, which was likely a sister group to the Hippopotamidae, suggested that hippo ancestors entered Africa around 35 million years ago and were the earliest large mammals to colonize the continent. So now that we talked about the evolution, there are also morphological differences and geographical distribution which divides hippopotamuses and into five subspecies. Those are as follows, with starting with the Nile hippopotamus, hippopotamus amphibious, which is the nominate species which stretched from Egypt, where they are now extinct, south to the Nile River to Tanzania and Mozambique. The Eastern African hippopotamus found in Kenya, in the African greater region and in Somalia, which is found in the Horn of Africa, which are known for their broader nasals and more hollowed interorbital regions. The Cape hippopotamus or South African hippopotamus, which are found from Zambia to South Africa, have the most flattened skull of the subspecies. The West African or Shad hippopotamus found throughout Western Africa and as the name suggests, Shad are slightly shorter and have wider face with prominent orbitals. And last but not the least, the Angolan hippopotamus found in Angola, the summer, South, Southern Democratic Republic of Congo and Namibia, named after its deeper pre-orbital constriction. Now let's talk about one of the ancestors of the hippopotamuses. They are Archaeopotamus. Now, Archaeopotamus is an extinct genus of Hippopotamidae that lived between 7.5 to 1.8 million years ago, which is now current Africa and the Middle East. Uh, okay. All right. So the genus was first described in 2005 to encompass species of hippos that were previously grouped in the family Hexaprotodon. One species... Archaeopotamus harvidae is, 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 was first described in 1977, which was originally named Hexaprotodon harvidae. Although the proportions of harvidae and Lothagemensis are similar, though the former species is significantly small. The femurs of 
archaeopotamus harvidi are approximately the same size as those of the modern hippopotamuses while another group of fossils originally described as hexaprotodon sahabiensis or the abu dhabi hippopotamus are now considered to belong to harvidi or lothagamensis the records show that archaeopotamus harvidi was more extensive than that of other archaeopotamuses now after talking about one of the subspecies and the ancestors of hippos let's talk about the their habitat and their diet now hippos inhabit rivers lakes and mangrove swamps where territorial bulls preside over a stretch of river and group of 5 to 30 cows and calves they mostly found in freshwater habitats however populations in west africa do inhabit estuarine rivers and maybe even found at sea during the day they remain cool by staying in the mud or water where reproduction and birth takes place they only go out to graze on grass during the night or during dusk times while hippos which is a fun fact while hippos rest near each other in water which is typically seen grazing is something they don't do in groups it's a solitary activity and hippos are not territorial on land hippopotamuses have 36 teeth and their dentition is composed of two incisors one k9 three premolars three molars distributed in each quadrant now let's talk about their behavior as mentioned hippos are not territorial on land but they are in water The dominant bull is also called as the beach master which presides over a small stretch of river which averages about 250 meters in length and contains up to 10 cows the largest pods can contain over 100 hippos young bachelors are allowed in the beach master's stretch as long as they behave submissive to them their territories exhibit to establish mating rights and within the pods hippos tend to segregate by sex the bachelors lounge near others other bachelors females with other females and the beach master is on his own when hippos emerge from the water to graze they do so individually as mentioned in the previous slide the hippos however despite the appearances are the most dangerous animals in the world due to their highly unpredictable nature and aggressiveness and now Hippos mark their territory by defecation. They use just like other animals and other predators generally found in lions, tigers, leopards. They use their feces to mark their territories. Here, hippos deposit their feces and spin their tails to distribute their excrement over a greater area. Yawning also serves as a threat display. While while challengers come to challenge the beach master the beach master might yawn showing its particularly large canines and incisors as a threat display to fend off young bulls when fighting bulls use their incisors to block each other's attacks and their large canines to inflict injuries hippos do communicate with each other vocally through grunts and bellows and they may practice echolocation but the purpose of this vocalization is currently unknown hippos have the ability a unique ability on on top of it to hold their heads partially above the water and send out a cry that travels through water and air individuals may respond above and under water and a hippo's lifespan is typically from 40 to 50 years now the ethology that the ethology is done we'll talk about reproduction and breeding seasons that occur in hippopotamuses now studies of hippos in zambia and south africa show that evidences of birth start from the wet season a female after getting pregnant will not typically begin ovulation again for at least 17 months mating occurs in water with the cows submerged for most of the encounter only her head emerging above the water periodically to draw breath cows isolate themselves to give birth and return within 10 day 10 to 14 days this behavior is also seen in other animals like lions and tigers or any animal that lives in a pack or group or groups 
calves are born under water weighing between 25 to 50 kgs and an average length of around 127 centimeters they must swim to the surface to take their first breath a mother typically gives birth to only one calf with ex- with twins occurring sometimes the young often rest on their mother's backs when the water is too deep for them and they swim under water to suckle they suckle on land when the mother leaves the water now males re- now males reach maturity at around 7.5 years and females in in half of that area calves are occasionally left in nurseries which are guarded by one or few adults where they they engage in play fights weaning starts between 6 to 8 months after birth and most calves are fully weaned after a year like many other large mammals hippos are described as case strategists in this case they typic they typically produce just one large well developed in, infant every couple of years the hippopotamus gestation period is of 8 months now that's all from my side now would like to call upon my fellow speaker miss nishtha to talk about some myths and other points regarding hippos over to you nishtha thank you abhijit it was wonderful talk so we learned about ethology behavior their description and of course their evolutionary uh, biology now let's come to starting like busting the myths knowing the facts okay so our first myth here is are they big eaters or not well that's the title of our uh, talk hippos even though they have this big size and humongous body like but they aren't actually big eaters they are they eat only 1 to 1.5% of their body weight every day or we can say every night because they don't eat during the day next is uh and hippos swim well no though uh, they spend 16 or more hours submerged in water they can't swim they only trot a trotting is that they uh, push the bottom at the bottom of the lake and then uh, move forward by pushing the uh, ground now next is um, can they breathe under water well actually no they have to resurface every 3 to 5 minutes to breathe and but the resurfacing mechanism is completely involuntary so they can also sleep under water while resurfacing every 3 to 5 minutes without even waking up so our next uh, point is are they thick skinned but incredibly sensitive well yes it is true they are thick skinned their skin is like 6 cm thick but their subcutaneous layer of fat is very thin making them really sensitive to ultraviolet rays now uh, are they blood sweaters well there is this blood sweat or we can say a uh, red color substance secreting from their skin okay but that is not blood that is not either sweat okay it is a, a substance red color which is consists of hypochloric acid and it secreted by the skin it provides a uh, protection from the uv rays it is normally colorless but it changes into red or orange color and later brown when it comes to the contact with the sun rays so um, our next point is are hippos territorial well yes they are territorial but only in water they are not territorial on land and uh, can they divert paths well there are studies going on uh, of they can divert paths and that is actually true they can uh, scientists have discovered that they have this big size and that their habit of feeding uh, it always involves taking the same path towards the grazing lands so they actually help in diverting the paths of swamps and channels so next point we have are they carnivores well they aren't carnivores they are herbivores their anatomy is not suited for carnivory okay are they social animals well no they aren't well we have this myth that they live in a group and they huddle together but actually they are very solitary there is this beach master which is a dominant bull and there are like 10 to 30 cows 
uh, in a herd or we can say in a pod or blood but actually they aren't social animals only mothers live with mothers or uh, bachelors live with bachelors okay now next is cannibal well they aren't cannibal but the studies are going on and it is not yet clear well there was this case in jawambu hawange national park in zimbabwe where a 4 year old uh, hippo was brutally killed by uh, dominant males or bulls and it was a very shocking sight for everyone but actually they aren't cannibals uh, but scientists have discovered is there might be some stress disorder some population explosion that uh, that initiated this uh, killing now next is they have cleaning stations and have a mutualistic relationship well yes they have this mutualistic relationship whenever a hippo goes some uh, goes under water it submerges under water and opens its mouth it is actually a signal to fishes and turtles to come and uh, to come and start cleaning their body and their teeth of all the parasites that might be attached to them now are they world's deadliest well yes they are world's deadliest world's deadliest but i will not say world's deadliest animal they are world's deadliest land mammal there are many others which are world's deadliest or and their killings estimated are 500 per year in africa now in news uh, or throughout the history hippos have long been popular as zoo animals first record of hippos in captivity for the display are dated to 3500 bc in herenkompolis egypt the first zoo hippo in modern history was obesich in the london zoo in 2005 uh, in on 25th may uh, 1850 they attracted at 10000 visitors a day and also inspired the song hippopotamus folk the toledo zoo hippo aquarium which uh, has a 33 lakh 60000 uh, us galleon pool where um, saw the first underwater birth of a captive hippo and then it became the logo of the little zoo also there was in 1910 when a, a american hippo bill was passed by us representative robert f borasard of louisiana where he actually said that we that hippos should be introduced in the bays of louisiana where they will eat the invasive water hyacinth and will uh, solve the american meat crisis and it was in 1980s where pablo escobar actually gave an order to have a male hippo and three female hippos brought to colombiana to his ranch uh, from africa and well when pablo escobar died in 1993 the hippos were abandoned because it was actually very hard to contain them and uh, ship them to their natural habitats so the government abandoned those hippos and now they have uh, estimate population of 70 hippos in colombia uh, colombian wild this actually sounds very nice they're like there are 70 hippos there but it is a big problem the town of doral near escobar's fable ranch is a center of hippo trafficking trade which targets calves and sells it to wealthy ranch owners okay and this uh, hippos are actually black marketed for its meat and tusk uh, and their teeth In 2009, two adult hippos and one uh, calf left their herd and started attacking humans. They killed cattle, and of course, then the authorities said that uh, these animals must be killed. So, uh, an adult named Pepe was killed by hunters. And then, when the photo of that adult hippo became public, there was a controversy, and animal rights group come came, and then further plans of killing were ceased. As of 2020. there are no plans by the local government on managing the population they have tried castrating containing them but the best solution which they have at uh, at the moment is shipping them to their native habitats now in india hippopotamus remains have been found in madhya pradesh near narmada scientists are of the opinion that hippos lived in india from 6 million years ago till 9000 years ago these uh, entered eurasia from africa diversified in south asia 
than before going extinct. An international team of researchers discovered these uh, specimens of hippohexapotodon species, and the fossils was unearthed in 2003 by Rajiv Patnaik and Parth R. Chauhan. Now, the recent and the newest study is that hippos actually have a lot to say. Okay, so the scientists are actually determining how uh, hippos recognize each other because they don't have sexual dimorphism. So uh, the voice recognition by scientists and studies on it shows that hippos can recognize each other with voices. Also, there is this news of, it is a very recent news, like eight to nine days ago only, where a four-year-old uh, four female hippo died in Panan Zoological Garden in Chhattisgarh, Bilaspur on Saturday. It, this hippo was brought from Nandankan Zoological Park of Bhumneshwar in February 21. Now, uh, in the records, if we say the oldest hippo uh, in the history is Bertha and Dona. Bertha died in 2017 at the age of 65. Dona died in 2012 at the age of 61. Now, cultural depictions. Well, hippos have been part of various cultural depictions. They are part of, being, of cartoons, songs, and of course, folklores. Uh, in cultural depictions, we have this red hippopotamus. It is an ancient Egyptian god set. Set's phallic leg uh, is a symbol of fertility. And there is Set's consort, Tavaret. Tavaret was also a hippo god and was the goddess of protection in pregnancy and child. Because Egyptians were of the belief that uh, of hippos and also hippo ivory was used in divination rituals. In African folk tales, Hippopotamus are, have this uh, sand story, okay, in which the creator assigned each animal its place in nature and hippos wanted to live in water, okay, but uh, the god refused that they can't live in the water because they will eat all the fishes. Then, after begging and pleading, the hippos were allowed to live in the water and after, uh, but on the condition that they would eat grasses instead of fish and will fling their dung so that can be uh, they can be inspected of fish bones. Well, that's kind of interesting. Also, there is this Nadil tale where the hippos originally had beautiful long hairs but were set on fire by a jealous hare and had to jump in the nearby pool. After that, the hippos were so embarrassed that they couldn't leave the water. There, well, these are stories of fictional, or we can say of folklore. There is also this story of Huberta. Huberta was actual hippo who traveled a long distance and was killed uh, by uh, farmers. It was in 1930s. There is also this tale of Owen and Mace, where a young hippo actually became intimate, uh, had this intimate bond with Owen, uh, which was a tortoise. And they have inspired many songs, the hippopotamus, hippo in core, and mud, mud, glorious mud. So, we have very fictional characters too. Well, the, uh, we have always seen this Fantasia film ballerina hippopotamus smiling and dancing on La Bayaconda. And also we have Hanna Barbara's Peter Potamus. We all know about it. We have hippopotamus polka from Western culture. And here, have, here we have Hungry Hungry Hippos. It is a board game. And Inker Tanker, a children book series written by Richard Scarry, Sil uh, Sly Cooper, a video game, The Pink Peepers of Portland, a children's storyline. Also, we have Battle Beast, a Japanese cartoon series, and a detective uh, comic series by Richard Stuckings. So they have actually become a lot uh, in animation and in, uh, they have become a part of our life. We have George and Martha, book of uh, children's book. Uh, this illustrated by James Marshall, and we have Gloria. She's a beautiful female hippo living in Central Park Zoo. We have Hugo the hippo. It was an animated film. Now let's move on to conservation status and actions. 
well moving to actions before we must know what are the conservation statuses well we have this four species of hippos hippo uh, hippopotamus amphibious hippopotamus liberensis hippopotamus madagascarensis and hippopotamus lemuric uh, hippopotamus madagascarensis and hippopotamus lemurley uh, were um, what what should i say uh, labeled extinct in 2002 and we have these two species now one is vulnerable common hippopotamus and the pygmy hippopotamus is endangered they were labeled this in 2006 their uh, this populations are stable and declining so why do we need conservation actions well hippopotamus are subject to unregulated hunting and poaching in may 2006 hippos were identified as vulnerable common hippopotamus by IUCN red list by having an estimated population of 1 lakh 25000 to 1 lakh 50000 hippos now zambia with 40000 and tanzania with 20 30000 uh, hippos are have the largest populations hippo populations declined dramatically in the uh, democratic republic of congo congo in 2005 the population of viranga national park dropped to 800 uh, or 900 from 29000 in the mid 1970s in 2016 uh, with the help of these conservation actions with help of cooperation with the fishermen and park authorities viranga uh, hippo population have increased the sale of hippo meat, meat as i have told you before is illegal and in black market it's sold and the hippo meat is considered as a delicacy by in various areas of central africa and their teeth are used as a substitute for elephant ivory so all these reasons actually make conservation actions important so what are the projects well iucn have this species survival commission which launched a hippo uh, specialist group it is a it promotes scientifically based actions for the conservation of common and pygmy hippos there are eight hippo uh, specialist group conservation projects going around the africa pygmy hippo community youth conservation volunteer program the cote di ivory pygmy hippo project population assessment of common hippos in eight western africa west african countries protection of hippopotamus uh, common hippopotamus in luama landscape supporting conservation of hippos in ruzizi river and tanganyika lake in eastern drc habitat use ecology and behavior of uh, hippos in an important water body of zulu land monitoring and long term conservation of common hippos using innovative technologies to assess the status of key hippopotamus population currently there is also this hippo hidden world project uh, in santa barbara where scientists are tracking hippos and their movement and their land use now what actions we can take as amrita told at the start of our webinar that we can post pictures we can attend webinars we can understand about them and we can talk we can discuss with experts and we can go on tours and of course spread awareness that's uh, with that uh, this i will like to rest and thank you all for joining anyone having any doubts or any queries ask in chat box otherwise unmute yourself hello yes hello hello sir am i audible to you yes yes you are um firstly sir i, I have a question um but uh, first of all i want to thank you for um, arranging such a amazing webinar to us and i will thank you for uh, thank you to uh, amrutha for uh, hosting this uh, seminar now sir i have a question to you um 
how would the how would be the uh, hippopotamus uh, useful for our ecosystem okay that's a very good question now as yes. mentioned in the webinar hippos used uh, hippos uh, use, uh, just a second i'm having some network issues okay so generally as mentioned in the webinar we had we had talked about how hippos uh, spread their feces to mark their territories right yes sir so what basic what basically happens is is that when they uh, provide provide their throat, uh, excrete their feces throughout in the in the water body what happens is is there are certain amounts of nutrients that go in the so in in the water and of course with the water there are certain amounts of extracts and nutrients that are going in and certain species of fish and other water uh, water plants or animals benefit from all the proteins all the nutrients and elements like nitrogen and ammonia going in the water they also provide they also change the ecosystem towards uh, on their own then uh, to benefit themselves but it also improves the quality of other animals existing in there, near them okay sir all right thank you others having any questions or any queries um, amrita if uh, there are no more questions we can move to the next point like sharing our google form for the quiz yeah exactly exactly well that is okay. good if hippo skin is very sensitive what about the controversy in the delhi zoo oh that's a very good question who who act, who posted this question do you know about the delhi controversy do you know about that video Yeah. very good question but i uh, i'm very sorry uh, we don't know maybe i don't know at the moment what is the controversy in delhi zoo yes ma'am uh, actually it was a video that was going viral where a hippopotamus was been beaten by the security in some zoo uh, yeah, yeah 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 no 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 i've seen the video i've seen the video well basically these kind of incidents do happen in zoos and other and other nature reserves where they are subjected to animal cruelty as they are being kept for show and hippos in general do have thick skin but it's not uh, yeah okay the question very sensitive the controversy well actually they have this sensitive skin but the skin is also thick like Uh, they are six centimeter thick. Their subcutaneous layer is thin, and of course, it there is like a cruelty. I mean, I mean, general. Like, if uh, we could say, since they, uh, it, it's not easy, but of course, they are very aggressive. Uh, and the one thing is that uh, if you go near hippo, they will definitely attack you because they are very, very territorial, and of course, then leads to like. Deep self-defense from the animal side and also from the per human side, things like that. Uh, Nishta, I would like to add a point here. The thing is, if it's something very controversial, I think yes. we shouldn't. We yeah, should not. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah, ma'am. We shouldn't. Uh, we shouldn't talk about this. But actually, I feel like 
you know now now in general the public is getting they're getting more aware about these situations that are taking place with animal cruelty and everything so yeah it is a little controversial but i feel if we talk about this maybe we can make a you know everyone can make a difference by sharing their viewpoint and yeah that that's what i feel i don't know if others agree with it but if we put our point up front talking about them the cruelty and trying to change the mindset of people that you know what this shouldn't happen maybe the lives of animals will improve whether they be captive or non captive our duty is to understand them let them live that's it okay so we have other questions sir Are there any other questions or any other uh, any people uh, participants would like to share their opinions? I think no more any questions. Oh wait! How oh, did wait. hippos Miss, go extinct yeah, from yeah. India? Miss Priya Darshani has asked. Priya Darshan, Mr. Priya Darshan, I'm extremely sorry. How did hippos go extinct from India? Okay, I feel like Nishta, you should answer this question. Okay, so well, hippos actually got extinct from India because there was this drought season uh, around. I uh, I'm not very sure. There was a period of drought, and then. after that they got extinct like 9000 years ago of course are there any more uh, any more questions if there are feel free to write them in the chat box or you could uh, unmute yourself and ask and thank you mr suraj for for this yes ma'am uh, actually there's a question linda asked she has messaged it directly to me it's can you elaborate on your conclusion that hippos are only territorial in the water and not on land anything any points you and nishtha would like to add on to this uh could you repeat the question ma'am i i didn't get you sadly uh she's asking can you elaborate on your conclusion that hippos are only territorial in the water and not on land they are only territorial in the water and not on land okay so as we have gen- uh, as we have like mentioned it in the presentation that hippos are not generally territorial on land and ter- only territorial in water the main reason basically behind this hypothesis and which is seen during all in, in various documentaries is that hippos are generally solitary animals when they go on go on the go on land and they mainly inhabit water and their territories are basically fresh water swamps and a variety of areas where you know hippos can thrive and not much of it is on land so maybe that's one of the reasons that's only one of the reasons that hippos can be only territorial and are mostly found in water rather than being territorial or fighting off other uh, other mating animal uh, mating and you know having fights on land
we call them uh, baby uh, hippo baby baby hippo sorry is called a calf it's in general also the term which is used for cow the babe cow babies of cows elephants whales and many other animals that you can find generally mammals okay uh, so if we are done with the questions and okay it's nice we are getting so many questions from yeah that's a very this is a very good question it's a very good question okay so as hippos and cetaceans like whales and mammals they had one common ancestor now the research on the common ancestor is probably still going on or i don't know if i've mentioned it or not but as far as we've known they diverged and there's little similar features that are found which which can you know you can just make sure that they can relate with each other and the common ancestor which we talked about was uh, ruminantaria and we can see this with whales as well because as we all know hippos are ungulates they are even toed ungulates this kind of diversification in morph morphological diversification is also seen in whales the only difference is that they they uh, their evol uh, their feet they have evolved into fins so if we are looking for the evolution in from the evolution point of view you can see that uh, we have mentioned about pachycytes which is a completely uh, unique specimen which is the which is one of the uh, you know ancestors of whales and hippos they were semi aquatic just as hippopotamuses and they would probably hunt on land and water there were certainly more other common ancestors and whale ancestors which evolved they diverged so that's all i have to say thank you and hippos didn't evolve from dolphins they diversified both the groups diversified any more questions there are so many interesting questions coming in okay is well nesta would you like to answer this question okay so monitor uh, monitoring of population of hippos in zoos somehow which, uh, like how it is done and those uh, data are collected somehow yes of course the uh, wildlife person zoologist and of course uh, people who are there in the field they collect that data they put them in the software of course there are softwares where data is collected and uh, there is this text question hippo float in water for a long time they don't float they submerge actually uh, they have this huge body size rotund body they actually sink in it and when we see them floating they are actually standing uh, still on the water with their uh, head and their nostrils up is it better for a hippo to be in a zoo because it is safe there well um, normally if there is a like very less population they are very endangered of course they can be kept in zoo but i think the best thing for an animal is living in a wild because they are free to them this is my opinion okay. for how long can a hippo stop its breath 3 to 5 minutes but they can stay there for hours because uh, every uh, their mechanism of coming uh, resurfacing uh, is completely involuntary they can sleep while submerged in the water and they come out uh, take a breath then go down again
Thank you. Uh, so if we are done with the questions from the participants, we can really move on to a very interesting quiz section, which we have. So, okay, one so more as, question. Uh, yeah, they can kill crocodiles and not eat them. Yeah, they do. They do kill them. They do kill them. They have a very good love-hate relationship with crocodiles. It's, it's a fun, fun fact. And hippos can run up to 30 miles an hour. They might not look like it, but as I said in the, I said in the presentation, looks can be deceiving. They're quite fast. Okay, uh, so ma'am, can we have the link for the quiz? Yes, I am posting it into the chat box. Done. Please click on the link and participate in the very interesting quiz on whatever you've heard in the webinar and whatever you think. Please go ahead. Uh, they can fill it up later or uh, they need to copy it or they are appearing it right now. What about Nishta and Avidya? What are you? The link is open at the moment. They can just copy this link and paste it in their browser. And, and the link will be open till how long? It will be for like next 15 minutes. Okay, guys, so make it quick. It's going to be only 15 minutes from now. We'll close the link in 15 minutes. Just click on the link. You can, you can either copy paste uh, it in your browser or you can fill it up right now. A short quiz. And as soon as you complete, write down done in the chat box so that we can know you're done with it. We request everyone to be a part of it. It's really interesting. Yes, it is actually very interesting. And we have a surprise gift for, for the top scorers too. Yes. Okay, so then that, that's going to make things pretty more uh, like appealing as well. Quick. I can see participants leaving. It's, it's only a few minutes left. Uh, Ma'am, I see your query. Yeah, even I saw this thing. Uh, I can't do the quiz. What would be the solution to... Email ID, just logging with that email ID and then he can fill that form. It doesn't have a Google account. It wants me to create an account. Okay, so people who cannot uh, appear for the link just now, we'll be sending them. Please mention your names. We'll note it down and we'll send you the links. Well, this is a good question. Now, we haven't mentioned it here, but uh, Sahukar has mentioned was asked, how strong is a hippo's bite? Well, it's nearly half the, half the bite force of a saltwater crocodile. It's near 1800 PSIs. This Pascal square, Pascal square. It's a unit to measure, measure force. Okay, so Kanishk Chen has completed 
the quiz. Thank you so much. Others, what about others? Okay, Komal. Yeah, Komal More has submitted the quiz. Great. Thank you. Did you like the quiz? You know, submit Yeah. What What is the What is the opinion about the quiz that we have sent in the chat box? The ones you have completed could. If, they if can they even add you to say, yeah, of course. Yeah, exactly. They, yeah. Feel free to unmute. Feel free to unmute and talk about the quiz or the event if you'd like to. Different kind of cool event. Okay. That's good. That's good to hear. Can't link into Google. Remember, uh, should we do this? Uh, yeah, we will. We've noted it down. We'll send you the link to appear in the quiz, and there would be a time limit. Definitely, you will submit it within fifteen minutes after the session. After the session, right away, we'll send you this. A uh, link for the quiz. Will that be fine? Okay. Wait, actually, I really love the, like this enthusiasm for doing things. We really like, uh, need people like this who are actually enthusiastic and participating and doing things. Yeah, definitely. But till now, we've just received only two people saying that, uh, okay, Karen couldn't uh, like log in and the other like Kanishk and Komal, they submitted. Yeah, we have only three responses. Cool. What about others? Yeah, Komal has written hope to attend offline sometimes. Sure, definitely. Even we do hope this pandemic gets over soon so that we all can have some really interesting offline events happening. Even the Nature's Eye is conducting a numerous online events. They are all in a line. Stay connected, stay tuned. Uh, I am just posting a link here. Just copy it down to your browser and later on you can search and go through various events that are being conducted by the Nature's Eye. It's helpful for almost every, every sector people, for students, for um young environmentalists, conservationists, nature enthusiasts, everyone. You're surely going to le learn a lot more from this. And I think participants, they are short of time to start in leaving. So I request everyone to just quickly switch on their cameras so that we can take a group photograph. And Come on, people, everyone now. Thank you so much.
should we conclude the session? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, Thank you, speakers, for the wonderful and insightful talk. Thank you to all participants for the joining. Uh, everyone must. Top five scorer will be get a special discount in our next webinar, which is a going to be a great webinar on sustainability. Thank you to everyone. Bye, and we end with done. Thank you. Thank you so much for being such wonderful audience as well. Thank you everyone uh, for joining and thank you Amrita ma'am for giving us this opportunity of speaking. Yeah. Thank you so much for being in wonderful audience. We hope to see you soon in the next webinar. Thank you.